What up, it's your boy Ali, and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. Now, before we get started, make sure to add me on IG. I haven't been promoting that at all, but you know what they say, it's better late than never. I'll be doing some giveaways on IG. You can also request videos there as well. Let's get started. In the early to mid-2000s, Jay-Z began to transition from rapper slash businessman to a mogul right before our very eyes. He became the president and CEO of Def Jam and made a ton of money while doing it. Needless to say, Jay has always kept his eye out for new talent. Around this time, Jay along with his partner L.A. Reid signed three new artists to the label, namely Rihanna, Neo, and Tiara Marie. Tiara Marie has always been musically inclined. Her mother was a gospel singer and would have Tiara in the studio with her while she recorded. It was almost like a passing of the torch of sorts, as it didn't take Tiara too long to master the art of making music. By the time Tiara was in her mid-teens, she already had one EP under her belt. That very same EP got into the hands of L.A. Reid, who offered Tiara Marie a contract after hearing her sing in person. And the rest, as they say, is history. I got the call, we went out to Atlanta, and he surprised us and he was like, okay, we have a meeting set up for you next week with L.A. Reid. As we all know, Tara Marie's time on Rockefeller and Def Jam was very brief. Under the label, she released one album and was dropped swiftly after it underperformed. So the question is, what happened to Tara Marie on Rockefeller slash Def Jam? Why did she have tension with Rihanna, Christina Milian, and 50 Cent? Let's dig in and find out. Let's talk about some of the artists. Um, Tiara Marie. Yeah. Okay, and she's the first lady of the rock. She's the gonna... princess. The... Now, in the mid 2000s, Tiara Marie released her debut album on Rockefeller. It sold 69,000 copies in the first week and debuted at number five on the Billboard 200. The album is a bit brief, coming in at only 12 tracks in length. Naturally, the album's lead single is Make Her Feel Good. which reached number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. Make Her Feel Good was followed up by No Daddy, and her third single called Phone Booth. Interestingly enough, Tiara's third single was supposed to be accompanied by a video. However, the video shoot was canceled and the single wasn't promoted at all, probably due to the previous single's poor performance. In my opinion, the album does have quite a few gems. Act Right, Make Her Feel Good, Stay In Your Lane, and New Shit are a few that come to mind. The album was a decent effort, but it does have a few shortcomings. For starters, at the time people didn't like Tiara Marie's constant reference to adult topics. When Tiara Marie dropped her debut album, she was about 17 years old. Hearing provocative lyrics from a teen might be normal now, but back then a lot of people were put off by it. For instance, on the song No Daddy, Tara tells a story about how she has friends who trick in the strip club in order to get by. If you compare Make Her Feel Good to No Daddy, it's like comparing night and day. Make Her Feel Good was more classy, whereas No Daddy was more ratchet. And that change of pace threw off a lot of Tierra Marie's fans. Another thing Tierra Marie's fans didn't like was her continuous use of the N-word. They claimed she overused it and only did so because she was an R&B singer signed to a hip-hop label. Overall, Tierra Marie's album didn't do amazing numbers according to Def Jam standards, but instead of resting on her laurels, Tierra Marie went right back to work on her second album titled Second Round. Needless to say, the project didn't come out under Def Jam or Rockefeller. Because her first album underperformed, Tierra Marie was dropped from Rockefeller and Def Jam, and apart from a few singles, her second album was never completed. What happened was, I got dropped from Rockefeller on my prom day. <laughs> you know. An interesting thing to note is that Jay-Z didn't call Tierra Marie himself to tell her that she had got dropped. She had to hear it from someone else. And from the sounds of things, Tierra Marie wanted to talk to Jay-Z one last time before her release. I was calling Jay my father. I love you like my father because my father is not in my life. Jay didn't even call and tell me I was dropped. I was hurt. Clearly, Tierra Marie felt some type of way. Tierra Marie didn't like the fact that Jay didn't reach out to her when she got dropped. However, after Tierra's situation with Jay-Z ended, much was revealed about her time on Rockefeller slash Def Jam. From the outside looking in, Tierra Marie was the artist that the label spent the most money on. She was often referred to as the princess of Rockefeller, and if remembered correctly, L.A. Reid thought that Tierra Marie would blow up instead of Rihanna. The funny thing about Rihanna's success is that we signed two girls at that time, Rihanna and a lovely young lady named Tiara Marie. We had an in-house company showcase and Beyonce happened to be there with Jay-Z. Tiara Marie, Rihanna, 
a four-girl group called Black Butterfly and Neo performed. Rihanna already had a hit with Ponder Replay, but we still thought it was the other girl. It wasn't until Beyonce vouched for Rihanna when LA Reid knew that Rihanna might blow up instead of Tiara Marie. A bell went off for me. However, when after the showcase Beyonce came up to me, that Rihanna girl, she's a beast. In my opinion, Beyonce was simply complimenting Tiara Marie, but she might have done so because Rihanna was Jay's artist. Unlike Tiara Marie, Jay handpicked Rihanna. He thought she was going to be a star, and when Beyonce backed him up, Tiara went from being the artist the label focused on to an afterthought. Now, Tiara Marie may not like to admit it today, but there was a lot of competition between her and Rihanna. Rihanna did an interview with Peach Magazine in the late 2000s. She got asked how she felt about playing second fiddle to Tiara Marie, considering Tiara had the label's support and not her, and she responded with the following. That was a funny situation, but I always remained humble. I was not always treated in the best manner, but I always remained who I was, and I was always kind in the toughest of situations. I was just a little Caribbean girl, you have to be good to people. I could very easily say it's all karma. Now when someone says it's all karma, what do they actually mean? In this case, I think it means that Riri thought Tiara deserved to be dismissed from the label. And Tiara got everything that was coming to her. Evidently, Tiara Marie didn't appreciate Riri's catty remarks. She clearly felt some type of way about it and told Rihanna to stop talking about her. They asked her how she felt playing second fiddle to me, which I never felt she was. She had the number one song in the country on Hot 100. I didn't, so she couldn't be playing second fiddle to me. When I heard that I was upset, like, why would she ever go there? Keep my name out your mouth, sweetie. Lately, when questioned about her tension with Rihanna, Tiara Marie denies it ever happened, claiming their beef was a figment of their fans' imaginations. This Rihanna beef is something that people created outside of she and I. Even when we were around each other at the label, we were always nice to each other. We've never had any beef. But even then, people were making it into something that it wasn't. Now in my opinion, Tiara Marie's song production and image choices led to her downfall. She was being marketed as a gangster chick with brash lyrics, and the beats she chose could have been used by any other mainstream rapper. Not to mention Tiara Marie was still 17 years old when her first album dropped, and the words that came out of her mouth offended a lot of people. In comparison, Rihanna had the perfect image. When Rihanna first got into the game, she had a nice, good girl image to her. Her lyrics weren't too provocative, and she had more crossover appeal as she could do pop, dancehall, R&B, you name it. Interestingly enough, Rihanna's first album didn't do amazing numbers right away. The project came in at number 10 on the Billboard 200 and sold 69,000 copies in the first week. Clearly, Rihanna wasn't an overnight success and fought for her spot in the game. Coincidentally, Tiara Marie also did 69K in the first week. In essence, when both artists released their debut albums, they were on an even playing field. But as mentioned earlier, the moment Beyonce co-signed Rihanna is a moment Tiara Marie will probably never forget. I never officially signed to Rockefeller. What it was was when I signed to Def Jam after the album was done, we met with Jay-Z. Following her departure from Rockefeller and Def Jam, Tiara Marie went back to dropping music. But it wasn't until her appearance on Love and Hip Hop when she was able to bounce back. Listen, the last thing that I want to do is go to a party celebrating Ray J. But he did tell me that his girl threw my things away. Now around 2008, Tiara Marie was supposed to release her second studio album called At That Point. She had a new label deal and a drive to prove herself. She released three songs off the album. However, the one that got the most traction is Sponsor featuring Soulja Boy. Interestingly enough, there was a little bit of controversy surrounding a song off the album called Diamonds. Put it bluntly, Diamonds was initially Christina Milian's song. While she was on MySpace Records, Christina recorded a bunch of songs with her producer that she didn't pay for. After a while, she left MySpace Records, subsequently leaving her recorded material behind to join the Dreams Radio Killer Records. A friend who worked for MySpace let Tiara Marie listen to the records that Christina Milian recorded. Tiara liked one of the songs that already had a Kanye verse attached to it and decided to make it her own. After that, she recorded her own version of the song and leaked it to the public, angering Christina Milian. Now, I don't blame Christina Milian for being upset about this. Imagine putting your heart and soul into your work only to have someone copy it and present your effort as their own. That would be annoying. However, it sounds like Christina passed on the song because if she really did believe in it, she should have purchased it right away. Time and money waits for no one. 
put that on a shirt. Now around 2018, 50 Cent and Thierry Marie stirred up a little bit of controversy. In an act of revenge and anger, Thierry Marie's ex uploaded explicit content of the singer online. Naturally, 50 got a hold of the content and reposted them to his Instagram. When Thierry Marie found out what 50 and her ex had done, she filed a revenge porn lawsuit against the both of them. Unfortunately for Tiara, she lost the lawsuit. Instead of receiving compensation from 50, the judge ordered her to pay 50 over $30,000 in legal fees, catching the young singer off guard. Now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. After being ordered to pay the 30k, Tiara kept dodging the payments and even missed court dates. In fact, to this day, she hasn't paid 50 Cent a single penny. Naturally, 50 Cent wanted his money and asked the judge to make Tierra Marie pay an extra amount of money. Tierra Marie allegedly made over 100k in 2019 off Love & Hip Hop, so she did have the money to pay 50. However, despite 50's best efforts to get a little bit of pocket change, Tierra Marie refused to pay up, claiming she was broke. Now, according to Tierra Marie, her lawyer backed out of the case at the last minute because it looked like she collaborated with her ex to upload the content online. Without a lawyer to back her up, Tierra Marie lost the case and was demanded to pay 50 cent. My lawyer was like, I can't represent you no more because it just looks crazy. On top of that, I couldn't get anybody else to pick the case back up. So basically the case was just going on. So the judge was like, okay, hey, you lost. You gotta pay him his legal fees. That's why I have to pay 50. Because we together. We, yes. Because we not. We are. Yes, we are. We're all fucking sitting here, sitting here. Yeah, with him. If, if you with me? You with him right now? That was my business. What? That don't make no sense. That, that's he our business. Tape out on you. You suing him in fifty? He did. But you're right here with him at but dinner. He did. In response to all this drama, Tiara Marie released a song called I Ain't Got It, aimed at 50 Cent. Oh, you think you getting I ain't got it. Oh, you think you getting I ain't got it. Now, how do you guys think 50 responded to Tiara Marie's inability to pay up? You guessed it, with more trolling. If you don't give me my money, what's taking you so long? Oh, you ain't got no money? Figure it out. 50 Cent also told the singer that a warrant has been issued for her arrest and proceeded to troll her on Instagram. However, evidently, Tiara Marie isn't one to take a punch and not fight back. Never believe a named Curtis, even if he is your favorite washed up old school rapper. Here is the real news. My lawyers are all the way on point. I never had an arrest warrant and spare change never trademarked shit. He is just trying to steal drip. He needs it bad. You see how this boy dress. Now around 2019, Tierra Marie got arrested for driving while intoxicated. According to reports, she was operating a Dodge Charger, driving through Queen's Midtown Tunnel, when one of the tires on her car got dislodged from her vehicle. Unfazed by the fact that she just lost a tire, Tierra Marie kept driving like that through the tunnel as cops pursued her. Witnesses claimed to have seen sparks flying and smoke coming from the car as it rolled down the pavement. When she was apprehended, Tierra Marie bragged about being a celebrity, but in the end, her credibility didn't stop her from being charged with a number of offenses, including DWI, unlicensed operator of a motor vehicle, illegal operation of a vehicle, illegal tinted windows, and violation of court-ordered ignition interlock. As we all know, 50 isn't one to let the situation die without saying anything, and he responded with the following. Jesus take the wheel. A drunk. I still want my money Monday, dirtbag. As most Tiara Marie fans know, her substance abuse was a plot device on Love & Hip Hop. In fact, before her recent run-in with the law, she spent 30 days in rehab because friends and a producer of Love & Hip Hop noticed how often she was intoxicated, they staged an intervention, and that's how they got Tiara Marie to go to rehab. Originally, they wanted Tiara Marie to spend 90 days in rehab, but she only agreed to do it if 30 days was the maximum time that she spent in there. As we all know, Tierra Marie has been focused on her reality TV career, she has been on Love and Hip Hop for years, and is mostly known for all the drama that she has caused on the show. Did you leave this? Did you leave that? Did you leave? Bitch! Back up a taste, ho. Maybe I had the coochie cream because my was your dirty ass. Her Spotify page gets about 40,000 monthly listeners, and her most popular songs on the platform are Make Her Feel Good, no daddy and deserve. Apart from her role in Love and Hip Hop, Tierra Marie also has a couple of acting credits. She appeared in a movie called Lottery Ticket alongside Bow Wow. I owe you an apology. I was so rude to you yesterday and I've been feeling horrible ever since. Look, it's cool with you. You know I understand. In my opinion, Tierra Marie was made to be on television. She thrived well on Love and Hip Hop, and that's more than what can be said about her singing career. While she was on Rockefeller and Def Jam, she had everything going for her. The looks, the talent, the drive, 
She had it all. Kiara may not like to admit it today, but Rihanna was her main competition back then. Riri took her spot, proving once again that the value of a Beyonce cosign is unquantifiable. A beautiful combination. Please welcome Tiara Marie and Rihanna. Wow. Don't you just love being on stage? Yes, it's so wonderful. That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. What happened to Tierra Marie in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, if you have any video requests, be sure to let me know as well. Also, be sure to add me on IG. That's Hip Hop Forever, 3Rs. Till next time, peace.